Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome, welcome to this lecture. So, we are going to continue the structure of antibody and T cell receptor. So, at the beginning we are going to talk about structure of antibody and I will start with a uh, slide which we discussed in my last lecture. Okay? Just to remind you as uh, uh, like what we are studying. Actually, what happened the antibody molecule if you see the antibody molecule that this whole molecule we already know that the n terminal part which is a combination of both heavy chain and light chain are basically responsible for interacting with the epitope of antigen. So, if you see carefully only this region is interacting rest of the part is not taking any um, uh, part in the interaction of the epitope. So, we will mainly focus like all the structure some part we already discussed. So, we will mainly focus how this region is formed and what is the structure and why this is how this can help in the determination of the diversity because it is not possible as we have already discussed that there are so many variety of antigen present in the nature and if every antigen is different that means, we need different antibody for the each antigen. right? So, if it is possible if suppose there are for example, 10 to the power 8 different antigen say. So, that means, there should be 10 to the power 8 at least 10 to the power 8 different antibody. So, all this variety all over the antibody molecule we do not need we just need rest of the rest of the part may be the same only difference we need to interact with the different antigen is this region. Okay? So, let us see. So, again this is the antibody molecule this uh, yellow one is uh, the light chain, the blue one is the heavy chain, uh, yellow and uh, blue region is a variable region. So, now after the discovery of bioinformatics and genetic sequence when all the sequence is known Okay, or many sequences of this uh, variable region of antibody is available. So, what can be done is uh, that simple we can uh, use simple bioinformatics. Okay, what we will do? All the possible variable region ab sequence available, suppose you just take that. So, variable region just uh, for your information what, uh, what I can tell each domain of this say heavy chain or light chain say uh, light chain has two domain heavy chain has four domain yeah each domain is generally consists of very close to 110 amino acids okay it's not exactly 110 maybe it may be little 112 15 or 108 but very close to 110 residues okay so that 110 residue if i consider that means 110 residue of amino acids so that means it is 330 nucleotide. right? So, if you take that 110 amino acid sequence of as many as variable region of heavy chain possible, then what we can do is using bioinformatics tool we can align them which is called multiple alignment. Okay, there are free softwares available. So, if you want to do that by your own because sequences are available in the database and the software is clustal W or clustal X that you can try. What we can see if you take different sequence and align them one by one, what you can see if there are some conserved sequence, if there is a variability we can see that and we can calculate the percentage of variability among the sequence. Suppose for example, we take 10 sequences of heavy chain V region or 100 sequence of heavy chain V region or 1000 sequences of heavy chain V region then multiple line them and calculate the variability among 
these sequence which region or which part of the sequence is really variable. So, if you plot that like uh, see the x axis is showing x axis is showing the number of residue and y axis is showing the percentage of variability. So, if you go from 1 to 110 approximately or 112 you can see the blue part blue region is not much variable may be say for the first 30 amino acid the variability percentage is approximately 20 to 25 percent, but suddenly you see some residues are highly variable. Okay. Similarly, again there is a small region which is not that much variable again there is a variability and this time the variability is even higher than the first one. Then there is a big range of residues or a good number of residues which is not as variable as this red region. Okay. Again the third region of super variability or hyper variability coming and which is even maximum more than 100. Okay. So, it is very very I mean number of variabilities very high. So, if you see say so I will just consider this blue region. Okay. So, we multiple align the blue region and calculate the percentage of variability and this blue region is the heavy chain and if we do that we what we can see? We see that there are certain region is not that variable, but there are certain region or only 3 okay, out of this 110 or, uh, or 15 residue 3 specific regions are highly or heavily variable. Okay. This region if you make this say this is a cartoon or the state sequence if you the linear sequence or the primary sequence if you see and if you mark in the same way the color code the blue and red you see there is a region okay, blue then a small red then again little bigger red region again blue and then red blue which means in a sequence some in the whole variable region because whole blue region we named already in the previous variable region some part is highly variable okay. and this region was named H V the first one is named H V 1. So, within this variable region there are three zone three zones which are hyper variable H V stands for hyper variable clear. So, if you see this then hyper variable 1, hyper variable 2 and hyper variable 3 and F R stands for framework region framework region. Okay, we will see what this framework means and in fact, if you remember I am going to go in the next slide, may, um, but if you remember most of this domain is constitute of the beta seeds okay. and there are three loops between these beta seeds. Okay. There are many loops, but three loops are within this beta seed that we will see. So, this blue part is mostly constitute the beta seed structure and this is I am talking about the heavy chain variable region and if you do the same exercise for light chain variable region we will see the same phenomena, but here if you see the light chain the yellow part because we are talking about the yellow light chain this framework region 1, 2, 3 and 4 same both are very much similar that F R 1, F R 2, F R 3, F R 4 same F R 1, F R 2, F R 3, F R 4 are also present in light chain, but here the variability in the framework region is little higher in comparison to heavy chain. So, now so light chain also have 3 hyper variable region Hv1, Hv2, Hv3 and heavy chain also have 3 hyper variable region Hv1, Hv2 and Hv3. So, let us proceed. So, this is the same figure I will come in little more detail same figure. If you see this one these are corresponding one. So, this is we are showing or I am showing you just the light chain region and whatever I will say this is almost equally applicable for the heavy chain region also or heavy chain variable region. So, this is the light chain variable region 
which is the same picture what we have seen in the last slide. So, if you see actually the yellow corresponds the beta sheets and three hyper variable region H V 1, H V 2 and H V 3 are three different loops. Okay. I am repeating again. So, these framework regions are basically or mostly the beta sheet structure and the hyper variable regions are the loop structure and if you what next this say this picture if I represent like this what you have seen before this is the same picture. Okay, we have seen this before, but only difference is here this hyper variable region are marked. So, H V 1, H V 2 and H V 3 this is also called C D R 1, C D R 2 and C D R 3. Okay. C D R stands for complementarity determining region H V 1 and C D R 1 are same or similar region either you can tell H V 1 or you can tell C D R 1 that means same thing. Okay. So, these three loops of this hyper variable I mean the variable region are basically the part which is interacting with antibody uh, antigen molecule. So, antibody if you see this figure if you see this figure if you see this figure I am just zoomed little bit if you see this figure that three loops are contributing this the tip of the antigen binding site or the variable region of the light chain. Similarly, the tip of the heavy chain variable region is also constituted by the same H V 1, H V 2 and H V 3. So, out of this whole antibody molecule, so out of this whole antibody molecule out of this whole antibody molecule a very little segment not many amino acids you can count them you can count them from here that it is not many. Okay. Very few amino acids are really responsible for interacting with antigen. So, now the thing is if I say there are 10 different amino uh, 10 different sorry there are 10 different antibodies that means most of the part will be very very similar okay they don't need much difference but 10 antibody if the 10 antibody interact with 10 different antigens that means they are hb1 hb2 and hb3 these three things are different so genetic sequence wise if we go because all antibody is a protein molecule and there are two chain light chain and heavy chain if it comes from two different gene we do not have to worry about the whole thing should be changed. So, each antibody only H V 1, H V 2, H V 3 or C D R 1, C D R 2 and C D R 3 need to be different and that is also not many amino acids or many nucleotides. So, in fact, if we consider or if you compare rather two different antibody against two different antigen or specific for two different antigens, then we will see the difference is only or mostly rather in C D R 1, C D R 2 and C D R 3. Okay. So, what they are making? They are forming this heavy chain and light chain. So, if you consider the heavy chain and light chain one more information I should uh, give you or tell you and you should remember that heavy chain and light chain the combination makes a structure and both the heavy chain light chain combination because antibody has two arm at two valency both are identical. It is not that in one antibody one arm can pick one antigen another arm can pick another antigen no both are specific to the same because it is a combination of same heavy chain and same light chain. So, same heavy chain light chain combination 
what are what kind of formation they do so that they can interact with the antigen. So, antigen may be different size, different kind, different shape. So, this is a very general cartoons that predicting like so V H and V L can make a pocket ok, pocket where a small molecule can fit ok. This is actually real crystal structure presentation. So, this is antibody molecule crystal structure and you can see the red part the red I am taking out this uh, laser because it is super the red is matching. So, the, the red part actually the antigen most of the time it is too small it is like haptane ok. Haptane is a small molecule which cannot produce immune response, but antibody can bind. So, these molecules this heavy chain light chain they can they are the making a small pocket where this pocket where something can fit ok. If this is the pocket something can fit ok or it can be it can be a groove you can see it is very simple it can be a groove where something can fit ok. If this is the groove and this is the antigen it can fit same way this is again a crystal structure with that antigen and yellow mark region is the surface of the antibody where antigen is interacting. It may be an extended surface like this you can see it is extended surface. So, a big area of the antibody is actually interacting with the antigen or it may be protruding surface ok. So, this is a this is a real antibody. So, you see this it is just portrayed. So, something if this is the out I mean the hyper variable region or the antigen interacting region is like that the um, uh, original antigen should be like this. So, that it can fit ok. So, if the antigen is like that we need something like this to fit here. So, this portrayal it is in fact um, uh, 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 real antibody against HIV surface molecule human immunodeficiency virus surface molecule. So, we can see very nice protrusion here. So, protruding surface also possible. So, not only the groove or pocket it may have protrusion which I mean sometimes this may be the antibody pocket antigen can fit or sometimes this may be the antigen antibody surface where antigen can fit antigen may be like this or antigen may be like this it is just the replica. So, it fit either this way or this way ok. And now, what we will see actually this antigen antibody interaction is most of the time, because most of the antigen what we are going to discuss like T cell response happen are mostly protein ok. Antigen carbohydrate may be an antigen, antibody can be generated again carbohydrate can be nucleic acid, but most of the time or majority of the antigen that our immune system face is protein ok. So, antigen antibody interaction is just like other protein protein interaction. Any two protein interact are most interaction are mostly ok protein protein interaction are mostly non covalent in nature ok. So, all possible non covalent force or forces that require to have a protein protein interaction are there in pro antibody antigen interaction because antigen is also a protein antibody is also a protein. So, any this is a non covalent interaction and these non covalent interactions are electrostatic force ok. It, it may be hydrogen bond between two antigen and antibody it may be a van der Waals force ok that van der Waals forces may be the responsible these all what I am talking about low energy non covalent interaction. It may be hydrophobic force ok. In the in the um, middle column you can see that I mean just get an idea like what this hydrophobic force means and what are the definition for, but those who are interested to know little more you can go and check in uh, any uh, protein chemistry book or uh, molecular biology book, signal transaction book or net it is available you are uh, welcome to see and know m detail about it and cation pi interaction. So, all five non covalent force or interaction may be 
present in antigen antibody interaction, but do not think that every interaction of antigen and antibody are having all 5. No, it may be all 5, it may be any 4 of them, any 3 of them, any 2 of them. Okay? It is a combination which 3, which 4 it de all depends what kind of surface property of the antigen and what is the surface property of the antibody. Okay. So, any of these force or all of these force or in combination of any of these force may be present in antigen and antibody interaction. It is a non covalent interaction. Okay. So, whatever we have discussed so far the structure like F R 1, F R 2, F R 3, H B 1, H B 2, H B 3 this we will see why it is important and hope you understand. So, that is mostly we discuss about the antibody of human or mouse okay, which we see here in this figure which has uh, two uh, heavy chains, two light chains, two variable domains in each arm, one constant light chain domain constant heavy chain domain C H 2 C H 3, but there are few antibodies which we already are seeing it is that cameliad IgG. It is sometimes it is called single chain antibody. Okay, it is present in camel. You see there is no light chain, it is very clear. Another thing there is no CH1 also. So, only variable region and CH2 and CH3 is there. So, these, but again this is a combination of two it is also have a uh, divalent. So, only one variable region of an uh, heavy chain are doing the job or serving the purpose of antibody antigen interaction. Okay. Same way if you see the SARC okay, one of the early antibody like molecule okay, if you see the evolution SARC has so many constant domains CH 1, CH 2, CH 3, CH 4, CH 5 they also do not have any light chain. Okay both of them has hinge, but they are um, uh, hyper variable region uh, sorry the variable region is only one okay, no light chain contribution. And the SARC antibody is also known as the new antigen receptor that immunoglobulin normally antibody you also say immunoglobulin. Okay. Immunoglobulin is uh, represented by capital I and small g okay, I g is a small abbreviation for immunoglobulin. So, SARC antibody also called IgNAR which is written here immunoglobulin new antigen receptor. So, hope you understand the basic structure of uh, antibody molecule or immunoglobulin molecule. So, if you understand then my life and as well as your life will be little easy for next slide. Okay. So, next what we are going to discuss is structure of T cell receptor. T cell receptor is basically the alpha beta heterodimer which is very similar to fab fragment. Okay. So, if you see how it is similar to fab, fab fragment of immunoglobulin you can understand. Okay. So, you know this is the this is the fab. So, this is the fab region right we already discussed which contain only V L and V H C L and C H 1. If you see this structure if you uh, see the color code of yellow and green see the T C R or T cell receptor is very similar. Okay. It has one chain with two domain another chain with two domain. Similarly, one yellow one green if you compare there is very much identical, but definitely there are difference this is two polypeptide one is called alpha chain another is called beta chain in this two domain upper part is variable alpha and in this case it is variable beta and then constant alpha constant beta there is no other part and each chain are integrated or um, just um, transmembrane domain are implanted them in the cell membrane. So, they cannot be free like antibody molecule it is, but B cell receptor like thing. Okay where there are two things. So, alpha chain and beta chain of T cell receptor have one transmembrane domain each and they are linked with the disulfide bond 
and if you see the variable region alpha and variable region beta they are very similar to fab fragment and if you see the antigen binding site is also same. Okay. So, I do not have to tell everything or repeat everything whatever I told during the uh, discussion of antibody variable region right. It is the same molecule slightly bigger way here also the carbohydrate or the glycosylation is there there is a variable region constant region. So, there is a stock segment it is not like hinge because here they do not have the flexibility like this okay. and the transmembrane domain this is a cytoplasmic bond a tail which is responsible for giving the signal or transducing the signal from um, when it and interact with the antigen MHC complex. Okay. So, I assume that you understand that part the um, immunoglobulin structure part and just correlate the similar thing they are structured they also have a framework region 1, 2, 3, 4 they also have hyper variable region 1, hyper variable region 2, hyper variable region 3 or CDR 1, CDR 2, CDR 3 exactly same, but they are from antibody gene and TCR are two different set of genes alpha and beta subunits are completely different gene which is not no way same, same to the antibody gene, but their property their structure their uh, beta seeds and loop all these structure is very much similar. Okay. It, now, we are we are just now we tell the alpha beta uh, T cell receptor. Okay. So, T cell not only have alpha beta T cell receptor, there are another kind of T cell receptor which accidentally actually discovered people are looking I mean the scientists are looking for uh, gene for alpha subunit okay. the alpha chain gene and protein and when, while they are looking for alpha um, different alpha subunits of T cell receptor the gamma uh, receptor was discovered and eventually the delta also came. Okay. But it is the gamma delta T cell receptor has a similar overall structure with alpha beta T cell receptor and it is also similar to the fab fragment of an immunoglobulin. Gamma delta T cell receptor definitely it is not exactly same as in their function they do not generally recognize the antigen as peptide presented by classical MHC 1 or MHC 2. So, alpha beta T cell receptor recognize antigen presented by MHC 1 and MHC 2, but gamma delta receptor is not. Okay. It is assumed that gamma delta T cell play an intermediate or transitional role between wholly innate or fully adaptive immune response. It is I mean research on gamma delta receptor is not as much as alpha beta not as min much information is available for gamma delta T receptor. Okay. Besides this TCR gamma delta or alpha beta T cell receptor there are few co receptors also present in T cell few I already mentioned like CD 4 and CD 8. Here in this picture both CD 4 or CD 8 are shown in one, but already you know that C D 4 present in T helper cells and C D 8 present in cytotoxic T cells. Okay, I, was, um, I hope I mean uh, so I just give a pause so you will tell. So, C D 4 present in help T helper cells and C D 8 present in cytotoxic T cells this, uh, this is unique I mean this is not both are not present in the mature T cells. Okay. Along with the TCR or T cell receptor, there is another kind of co receptor present which is CD3. Okay. So, what are they? I mean, the total number of receptor, major or important receptor for T cell CD3, TCR, CD4, or CD8. Okay. So, now if I say so, T helper will have what? definitely they will have a TCR, they will have C D 3 and what they will have? They will have C D 4. Then cytotoxic T cell what they will have? They will have TCR, 
C D 3 and they will have C D 8. Okay. So, these are the total T cell receptor, but C D 4, C D 8 there is no variety or there is no question of direct antigen bonding. So, they are responsible for interaction with MHC, C D 3 is responsible for signal transduction, but if I somehow can identify how many cells have C D 3, you will find all T cells are having C D 3 for uh, their signal transduction. So, this is a general marker right T C R is general marker, but it is the T C R is the only T cell receptor which is responsible for antigen binding. So, this is overall or in general structure of anti uh, T cell receptor and B cell receptor or antibody molecule. So, now we will see how this uh, antigen variability developed in our next class. Okay. So, for the timing thank you all thank you very much.